<sighs> I made it, folks. It's finally done. We, yes, it's officially over. Uh, the, the last episode of Kamen Rider Zio, it's done. Unless there's some spin-off movies or whatever that's coming down the pike, which is most likely going to happen, although I don't know how it's going to happen considering how things uh, turned out. But yes, we are officially done with Kamen Rider Zio. Next week, we can move on to Zero One. <laughs> oh, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, there's Ryu Soldier episode uh, 23. Three or four or whatever. Anyways, yeah, let's just get that out of the way. Basically, uh, Real Soldier is just a. Uh, this time, it's just an. Or, uh, it's just a glorified clip show. Uh, basically, just flashing back on you know, like all some of the cool uh, key, uh, all the cool Ryu souls about the uh, that they used and yeah apparently uh, how why everybody's able to just use all these different Ryu souls and where they came from. Yeah, apparently they're just fo they're just like fossils. You just go and d uh, you just go dig up a Ryu soul, and you can just like, ah, cool, I got another one. Yeah, basically they're and you can even just trade them around. They're just basically over. Uh, they're just like if trading cards can give you superpowers. So yeah, basically it's like Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> and yeah, uh, once we get past all the clip show nonsense and uh, establish exactly what the Ryu souls are. Yeah, there's a, a plot focused, a little minor plot focused around this one Ryu soul that uh, apparently has the ability to grant wishes, and apparently, yeah, that was what actually divided the land and sea Ryu soul tribes back all the, all back then, because, uh, well, yeah, they wanted to get their hands on this wish. And yeah, Set actually comes in and you know, gives this exposition, but before he can actually go into any detail, you know, like whether it, you know, actually, you know, has any side effects, you know, whether, you know, the wish granted is like with a monkey's paw curse, or, you know, if somebody wishes with the Ryu soul, they instantly become a magical girl or something like that. He just goes and conks out and, uh, yeah, leaving Yui's dad back in charge and our heroes to, uh, well, start fighting and bickering over it on, as to how it should be used. But yeah, it's actually Ko of all people who actually acts the more reason. Actually, he acts as the voice of reason this time instead of, you know, basically just teetering on being a dumbass right as he's usually been. Yeah, it seems like since the staff rewrite, they've actually, you know, started to have him, you know, start taking things a little bit more seriously and is, uh, yeah, just generally more focused as a leader and yeah, you know, just always wanted to try to be more the mediating voice of reason. Or at least how he was in this episode. Anyways, yeah, Wiser who disguises himself as uh, Oto. He steals it, tries to use it for himself, but he can't. And, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Ko apparently is able to, uh, is actually able to speak with the Ryu souls. He apparently could just talk with them. And, yeah, no, he's totally, it's totally not li like with how Daigo uh, uh, bonded, uh, can hear the melody Earth or anything like that. No, no, no. Totally not a Ko rip. Uh, totally not a Daigo ripoff. No, 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 no. But yeah, pointless filler, clip show, yeah, whatever. Anyways, Zio. Yeah, Sogo does become Oma Zio, but he doesn't go the way that it's expected. See, uh, yeah, uh, backing up a bit here, Sukiyomi actually goes and plays possum for a bit and actually pretends to portray Sogo and Gates uh, in order to, well, yeah, make it look like she's out lying with her brother, when really she was just waiting for the right opportunity to stab him in the back because I guess she figured that, um, yeah, uh, yeah, she's become common writer Sukiyomi, and, um, uh, yeah, she just got her writer powers, She, uh, 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 somewhat inexperienced, and yeah, another decade could probably just stomp her flat. Even though there's the whole uh, yeah, first, ru uh, first rule henshin automatic win uh, unspoken rule. No, they just go and drag us out to go and make us think, oh yeah, Sukiyomi, curse your son but inevitable betrayal! Rawr, rawr, rawr. But yeah, no, I was like, yeah, no, I don't buy that for one minute. And yeah, she stabbed Schwartz in the back just as he was about to, well, okay, yeah, backing up a bit again. Uh, yeah, apparently uh, why Sukiyomi needed to become a writer was so that, well, Sukiyomi and Schwartz's world could apparently have a writer to represent them and survive the world merger, which was apparently uh, you know, what Tsukasa told them. Yeah, you know, going back to how his series ended about, you know, all the worlds merging with only one writer remaining, blah, blah, blah. But again, that shouldn't really matter since after a decade, all the worlds are supposed to have merged together. But yeah, now at the end of Zio, apparently all the writer worlds are divide. All the Heisei writer worlds are divided again. What the hell? Yeah, no, I'm I'm betting that yeah, just like with Bill. I, oh yeah, speaking of, they, uh, 
they they literally are just ripping off the uh, uh, ripping off Seto's plan at the end of build uh, to go and migrate everybody from the uh, from the ruined Earth to the new one, minus the big bad. They're not even trying. It is it is blatant. Just yeah, you couldn't come up with a yeah. They had to go and get some sort of Deus Ex Machina garbage to uh, uh, you know get themselves out of this narrative corner they've written themselves into. And yeah, um, so in the midst of all this, uh, oh yeah, another decade. Aside from being able to summon uh, Dark Riders, he can actually summon endgame bo uh, and uh, he can actually summon final monster bosses, including the Utopia Dopon from Double and Dakuva Zeba from Kuga. Let's see, Game Deus from X Aid. Uh, let's see, the Sagittarius Zodiac from Forza and Evolt. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Common Rider Revolt. To, yeah, they're not even, uh, yeah, again, to add to the absolute blatancy of this. Uh, but then, well, yeah, Sogo is, is able to uh, regain the power of Grand Zio, uh, but against another decade, plus all those big bads from uh, that I mentioned, he gets curve stomped. And just as another decade is about to kill him, Gates goes and gets himself fridged. Which, you know, yeah, so, and, uh, which, you know, it, it, yeah, you know, Oh, his best friend got killed right in front of him. He activates the pain of loss, and Sogo finally becomes Omazio. And with this new power, he just completely one shots these uh, these end game bosses, uh, these end game boss monsters. Just uh, just one punch. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, I'm not even joking. He literally turns into one punch man. Yeah, just Saitama is just like, uh, okay, <laughs> I'm too strong. Uh, yeah, no, he just. Uh, yeah, sure. Demonstrating Omazio's power against these uh, against these big bads, that's actually a much better demonstration of his abs of the absolute terror of his power, as opposed to how he was at the beginning, where he just uh, casually brushed away all those soldiers. Y yeah, you know those soldiers in San Chance against a guy blinked out like that. But yeah, uh, Sogo uh, finally succumbs to his inner despair and darkness, and he destroys another decade and kills Schwartz. But instead of becoming Omazio and just continuing on with this whole, you know, what was uh, predestined to happen, Sogo, uh, well, well, Sogo has one last vision from the future Omazio, and yeah, actually learns that, you know, destruction comes before creation, so yeah, God of Destructions from Dragon Ball Super and all that jazz, so Sogo figures that, yeah, so if I, uh, so if I could destroy all of time, then... I'll just destroy this timeline. So yeah, he, Sogo just destroys uh, 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 the the Zio timeline, and he reconstructs the world as he sees fit, where he, Gates, Sukiyomi, uh, Ur, and Ora are all friends and going to high school together. It's 2008 all over again, and yeah, there's no more Common Rider Zio. So yeah, he Zio erased himself from existence. And so this entire series was a complete waste of time. Yeah, just 49 episodes. Yeah, uh, basically, they went around the world just to go next door. I... On the one hand, I should be a lot more annoyed since... Um, yeah, basically, Shirakura has wasted our time with this... And all those tribute episodes and all the mischaracterization, yeah, let's see, Asuma becoming the second Hibiki, Kagami becoming the, uh, the new Kabuto, all that, it, uh, oh yeah, the resolution and conclusion and uh, the reunion between Kazaki, Hajime, and Amane, uh, let's see, uh, Shoichi, uh, yeah, uh, 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 Shoichi's time in France, and uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Oh yeah, uh, Kusaka and Takumi still being alive. That all is just undone. So what we're left with is just nothing. Zio is basically just erased himself from. Yeah, Zio is basically be, uh, done the exact same thing that Ryuki did. Only, it, oh, only I. Yeah, how are they going to wriggle themselves out of this one? Oh yeah, and oh yeah. Before I forget, Tsukasa and Kaito are still alive. So you know, hey, they managed to get out of the world before you know everything just went poof. So yes, there is no more Zio. There's no more Oma Zio, and all that, uh, all the stuff with Schwartz, the another Riders. That's just all gone. 
until they figure out some way to go and wriggle it back in because, uh, because well, burial at sea. Or because Bioshock Infinite burial at sea. There's always one Comstock, there's always one Booker DeWitt, blah, 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 you get the drill. So, okay, Zio's done with, Zero One is coming next week. Looking forward to it, it's written by the same guys behind X8, so, you know, hey, there's hope. So, my overall thoughts on this season... It's okay. Before I say anything about Zio, it's nowhere near as bad as Power Rangers Mega Force, but it's in that similar category of just disrespect, you know? Disrespect for what came before, disrespect for the characters, and just all around just not, just bizarre forms of laziness, just not caring. I mean, some in some aspects, Zio does go and give some conclusion to well, ha dangling little plot threads and character and uh, well, character moments, like for example, Kenzaki and Hajime uh, at the end of Blade. Uh, let's see, and oh yeah, I uh, yeah, one highlight was the conclusion of the Kabuto arc, which had Kagami finally becoming the second, Ka uh, finally becoming Kabuto, uh, well, at least getting on par with Tendo. Uh, but everything else, just uh, do I even need to mention just how? Okay, I'm not. A, I've never seen Kamen Rider Hibiki. I'm not the biggest. Uh, I don't want to watch it because, yeah, sure, Cora just absolutely dragged that show through the dirt. Uh, but yeah, anyone who actually was a fan of Hibiki was, like I said before, back at that other vlog, were most likely just steaming had steam coming out of their ears like a tea kettle when they saw uh, Kyria becoming he the second Hibiki and no mention of a Sumu. Oh yeah, I accidentally said a Sumu before. Sorry, my bad. But yeah, and yeah, focusing on its own plot, it just was all over the place. It, it was uh, yeah, like I said, it, it's still it's still miles better than Power Rangers Mega Force because the fans uh, because the characters could act uh, you know they actually had a range of emotions and it wasn't a, a botched bastardization of Gokaiser and Gosager. Uh, yeah, so it was its own product. So uh, I'm not sure whether to yeah, but it's if, if Power Rangers Mega Force was like right here, then Zio would probably be just a tiny smidge above. It, it's got enough good... Well, it's got... Well, well, for one thing, it helps that it doesn't have anything to compare itself to. Like, again, Power Rangers Megaforce had to be compared to Ghost Sager and Gokaiser, and anybody who's seen those shows and then saw that, uh, just... Uh, and also, Zio apparently doesn't didn't have the uh, infamous budgetary issues uh, that Mega Force had. I, I, I mean, yeah, they managed to get uh, back whatever uh, whatever returning cast members they could or wanted to come back because, again, a lot of pe a lot of uh, a lot of returning actors. I'm I'm assuming some of the actors would have wanted to come back and to reprise their characters, but they refused to because, again, they absolutely despise Shinichiro Shirakura. Uh, yeah, especially with the uh, with the cast of Hibiki. Uh, I would not – if they somehow managed to get Shigeki Hosokawa back to play Hibiki, it, hell would have had to have been frozen over. Uh, just – I mean, yeah, although, uh, again, like I said last uh, – a couple of vlogs ago, this entire series could have been avoided altogether if Sogo had just not picked up the driver. If he had just not used the ride watch, if he didn't turn into Zio, none of this – none of this would have happened. Uh, but, yeah, just, uh, yeah, Schwartz is, uh, oh, yeah, apparently the reason why Schwartz even wanted to turn Sogo into Omazio in the first place was, apparently so he can use his powers as another decade to go and steal Omazio's power and destroy all of reality himself, thus saving his world, and that's when Tsukiyomi stabbed him in the back, giving Sogo the chance to kill him. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, and Tsukiyomi becoming a common Rider, that... Honestly, I think I might have to retract my statement about Kivala being worse. At least Kivala actually fought against Decade. At least she, uh, at least she was responsible for saving the worlds. And uh, I, I don't know. There's pros and cons to both of them. But yeah, Zio was just all right. Let, let's see. Starting off with Sogo himself, the guy is. 
he's uh, yeah he starts as uh, starts off as a naive asshole and well, becomes less naive but is still kind of is just a dumb asshole uh, yeah uh, uh, he should oh well yeah he, he he keeps on proclaiming about how he's going to be the king uh, but he's doing so by stealing the power uh, by basically stealing the powers of the previous haste of the previous haste riders Okay, some of them were kind of forced on him, like with, well, the early set of another writers were, yeah, those another writers were running around causing uh, causing all sorts of chaos, and the and the right watches just kind of happened to fall into his lap. Uh, and, but, and yeah, the second half of the other writers were confusing. The ones that were created in 2019 were just, yeah, they didn't override their writers' histories. They saw the previous writers come back, so... Where did the another writers come from? When the another writers were, why couldn't they just stuck to the previous rules? Uh, or would it, or did they just think it would make less sense for these another writers to be active for so long? Especially when it comes, uh, well, yeah, as we saw with another Forza and another another uh, Fies, apparently these another writer powers have a well have a short uh, short lifespan. Yeah, when he, uh, let's see, when he when another price was created in 2004, he was already starting to run out of power when it came to uh, when 2013. So Schwartz turned him into another Forza to keep him as another rider, well, uh, basically supplementing the another Fies power. So yeah, for uh, I guess they might have realized that with Fies being so um, yeah, from Fies onwards, it would have uh, uh, let's see with Kuga, Agito, and Ryuki. It would have been a lot harder to try and justify those and other writers being active for so long and yet nobody doing anything about them. Uh, but still, if you uh, at least be consistent, they just suddenly decided, "Hey, we could create another writers in the present day, and they won't have to." Uh, uh, but wait, the other uh, the writers that they're based off are still around and could give Sogo his power. So. What was there like a script change in the middle there? Did, uh, did they change like Schwartz, uh, Schwartz's motivation there? Yeah, he started off wanting. Uh, he and the time jacker started off wanting to prevent Omathio, but it turns out that uh, that Schwartz was manipulating them into creating the another writers that Sogo could become Omazio, so that Schwartz could become the king of all time. Yeah, it's just overly convoluted. It just uh, yeah, Schwartz. You could have just. Uh, Oh yeah, and Schwartz, if Omazio was your end, if, if turning Sogo into Omazio was your end game, then what was with Omazio in 2068? What did you just like? Uh, did, you, did you just like forget him? And you were just like, oh yeah, I, I accidentally left that guy with uh, I left that guy with the powers of all 20 Heisei Riders, and he's just destroyed the world. Oops. It's just where, wh and yeah, why would Omazio even? Uh, 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 why would Omazio even help Sogo? He, uh, I mean, yeah, again, it's like with uh, with Reverse Flash. As long as Sogo's alive, then his timeline's secure. But he knows that his younger self, with Gates and Tsukiyomi uh, uh, telling him about what kind of a horrible monster he's going to be, is not going to become the same Omazio as he is. So why would why wouldn't Omazio just keep on sending his minions go uh, back in time to go and kill Gates and Tsukiyomi, and just have Waz go and coax uh, go and guide Sogo to becoming the monster? In fact, why was why was Waz even around? Uh, I know he was initially there just to go and guide Sogo to becoming Omazio, but he had to have realized that yeah, if Gates and Tsukiyomi are around, then uh, my wa uh, my Wagamao isn't going to be uh, then. This Wagamao is it going to be my Wagamao? Oh, then. Oh, as soon as he got the right of uh, the Kamen Rider Waz powers from his altered universe self, why didn't he make killing Gates and Tsukiyomi his top priority? I mean, yeah, sure, Sogo would have been absolutely furious at him, but you know that could have been the catalyst for Sogo to becoming Omazio. You know, succumbing to his rage and despair and being unable to save his friends and you know all that garbage. There's just so many more logical ways that they uh, that this could have gone about if you just stop and think about this for a second just and yeah gates uh, yeah first he uh, first gates comes back in time he wants to kill so uh, well yeah he wants to do what booker and elizabeth were planning to do uh with comstock and smother the son of a bitch in his crib in this case killing sogo before he becomes uh before he activates the driver becoming zio 
But then afterwards, he keeps trying to kill him, but then somewhere along the way, Sogo is somehow able to convince him that he's not going to be turning into that uh, into the monster that terrorized his world, and starts to actively help him. And the only reason he stopped, as soon as he got the Gates Revive powers, after the whole thing with the future, uh, with the three future and other riders, is there is no reason. He's just, he just helps Sogo become Omazio for basically no reason. He's just there to, uh, and yeah, Sukiyomi. Let's see, she, uh, well, at least she was a lot more active than most female companions. Well, uh, nowhere near as active as, say, uh, let's see, uh, uh, let's see, uh, f uh, what's her name from Kamen Rider Drive? Uh, hold on, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Stop, 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 let's see. Uh, Kiriko, I think it was. Yeah, Kiriko. Anyways, yeah, nowhere near as active as she was in, uh, as Kiriko was in Kamen Rider Drive. Uh, but yeah, at least she actually did go in. Uh, well, at least she, at least she had something to contribute. Uh, yeah, what, oh, uh, what her history with Schwartz was revealed. Her and yeah, her becoming a uh, Kamen Rider was just a throwaway. But yeah, I mean, sure she died, but at least she was brought back. So. Well, not as Kamen Rider Sukiyomi, but, uh, just, she was just kind of there. Uh, at least she, uh, ah, whatever. So, I still hung up on, uh, Shinosuke's, uh, girlfriend there. Uh, uh, let's see, Ghost, yeah, Kiriko Shijima, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, Waz was... Yeah, he could have done a lot more to make sure that his Lord's timeline... Yeah, we don't even know uh, whether Waz was actually working for Omazio in the future, or he was forced to drink the Kool-Aid and became subservient to him. I'm pretty sure that's going to get explained in Overcourtzer. In fact, I, uh, in fact, my entire opinion of the show could probably just uh, flip based on that movie alone, since that was apparently where uh, where uh, Sogo finally created the prop uh, properly created the Drive Ride Watch. So... Oh yeah, speaking of the writer tribute arcs, they they were very hit and miss. Let's see, Kuga's was throughout the movie, oh, oh uh, through Zio and Bill's crossover movie, and yeah, not a whole lot that could be done with the cast there, sadly. The Akito arc was, um, it, it was okay. At least, uh, at least Shoi uh, Shoichi's actor came back, and yeah, they did have a little bit of a continuity nod with Shoichi, uh, you know, admitting you know his real name was Tetsuya Sawaki, and you know Sugiyomi's amnesia. At least they, at least they had some good dynamics with that. The Ryuki arc, oh, ugh. I mean, aside from the surprise butt sex, yeah, no, uh, yeah, uh, writer time, common writer Ryuki, yeah, no, aside from, yeah, uh, uh yeah. Toshiki Inoue apparently ships, uh, uh, apparently ships Raya and, uh, Guy. No joke. No, uh, no joke. And, yeah, nope. They did the nasty. Heh. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, I'm not saying anything negative about that. I'm just saying, uh, that was a giant, what the hell? I mean, where did that come from? I mean, is Inoue coming out of the closet? If so, good for him. But just kind of a weird way to go and say that. Just, uh... <clears throat> But yeah, aside from that, Ryuki uh, in and of itself is a complete and utter clusterfuck uh, when, you know, uh, placed into the overall writer continuity. Since, yeah, like with Zio, Ryuk the events of Ryuki were over, uh, were, uh, never happened thanks to what happened at the end. So, uh, so uh, and yeah, even another Ryuga and Dark Shinji showing up, uh, you know, when those two showed, uh, when Dark Shinji came back as another Ryuga in the main show, I thought... Oh, okay, so the events of episode final are canon, and what happened in the main show was non-canon. But then we have, uh, but then we have Shiro, and yeah, we know it was Shiro Kanzaki coming back as Kamen Rider Odin uh, at the end of that special, and the Mirror World was still there, and Shinji, the uh, other, uh, 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 the other Mirror World writers having amnesia, except for Sakura, because, and just, it, it made no sense. Uh, oh yeah, and also Ren's dead, and Shinji is the only one that survives, and 
I hate you, Shin. Shinji Kido is one of the worst common writer protagonists. Just saying. Yeah, as bad uh, as head smacking as Sogo could get, at least he's no work. I want to say he's at least not as bad as Shinji. Anyways, the Fies arc. It made sense because, well, uh, while well, Kamen Rider Fies' history being overwritten, there is no Orphanox, so thus, well, yeah, Takumi and Kusaka's relationship would have been incredibly different. And, you know, I, I didn't have a problem with Takumi and, Tsukasa being, uh, and Kusaka being alive in, in 2018 because, again, their histories were overwritten, they didn't become Orphanox, they didn't become writers, so, yeah, uh, the smart brain and all that, just take it off the table. But then that begs the question of how these two actually met in this revised timeline. And yeah, at least Kusaka, for what little we got of him, was nowhere near as hateful as he was in the main series. And yeah, no, Kusaka is the primary reason I will never subject myself to Fies. Because I just I'm, would be too tempted to jump through the screen and strangle him until his eyeballs pop out like champagne corks. I'm sorry if that got a little graphic, but no, everyone who's seen Fies can agree that Kusaka is lower than Pond Scum. And, but, yeah, again, uh, again, without the Fies gear and without the uh, the whole Orphanock thing, I could see how Takumi and Kusaka's relationship would end up completely different uh, in the present day as they would back when Fies was, was active. The Blade Tribute arc, one of the better ones. Let's see. Uh, let's see, with Kenzaki and Hajime, although, again, I still gotta go and take points off of that for, you know, Kenzaki not leaving Japan. Again, he knows that if he encounters Hajime, he'll be driven by his instincts as an undead to continue the battle fight. And if one of them loses, then the entire world is infested with dark roaches. So, again, to ensure that Kenzaki and Hajime never meet, why didn't either one of them just leave Japan? Just... Go move somewhere else, like go to China, go to Russia, go to, go to America, or go to Taiwan. It's just anywhere other than the one country that you know that you know you'll encounter the other Joker in. And also, why the hell did Hajime just go into seclusion and you know not bother checking in with Amane? And yeah, that's what led her to becoming another blade in the first place, genius. Oh yeah, and also another blade. Uh, being able to steal Kenzaki and Hajime's Joker powers. Oh, 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 yeah. Again, how did they get their hands on the uh, on the? How did Kenzaki and Hajime get their hands on the uh, uh, get their hands on the Rouse cards and the driver? Uh, yeah, I know that Hajime's belt uh, is basically built into him because you know he's the, he's the albi he's the original Joker. But Kenzaki's blade buckle should be locked should have been locked up and bored along with all the other av uh, along with the other uh, Rouse cards minus the human undead uh, minus the human card which yeah Hajime has to maintain his humanity. How did they let Kenzaki get in there and get the cards and the deck and the and the driver? How did they? Uh, was anyone still at board when all this was going down? Uh, yeah, Tachibana. Uh, Maybe not Mutsuki, but just no one was there to go and say, "Hey, yeah, Kenzaki, um, I, I know you're, I know you're, I, I know you want to go and kill Hajime, but yeah, just hold up a sec." How did he get that back? Uh, let's see, the Hibiki arc again. For anyone who is actually a fan of Hibiki, I'm sure was more than a little bit frustrating, considering you know Kyosuke becoming the new Hibiki and him passing him off passing himself off as the real Hibiki just to go and get himself an ego boost from a little kid. Kyria Kyosuke is a is mm, Yeah, no, just just a uh, just uh. And yeah, the Kabuto arc. Uh yeah, again, the Kabuto arc was one of the few good ones. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, 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 let's see. Uh, yeah, I mentioned that before. Moving on, Deno actually getting two tribute arcs. First in uh, first in the movie, and then in the main show. Uh, more than a little bit overkill. But yeah, hey, Deno is apparently still one of uh, one of the Kamen Rider franchise's biggest cash cows. So go and milk them udders for all they got. Uh, yeah, the one in the movie was still pretty. Was actually pretty. A uh, pretty decent. And the uh, the one the second one in the main show it was just there to go and set up Grand Zio. Yeah, whatever. Let's see the Kiva arc. A very very just. Uh, yeah, another dud. 
Uh, why were the Armist Monsters working for another Kiva? Since, yeah, the only reason that the Armist Monsters helped uh, you know, Wataru was because they owed a debt to his father, Otoya. And uh, that's why they kept themselves inside Castle Duran to keep the, uh, keep the big lug under control and lent, uh, uh, lent uh, Wataru uh, their powers. So, uh, yeah, since the timeline wasn't revised, they should still be loyal to Wataru. So, why are they working for another Kiva, then? And who's watching Castle Duran? It's just... Oh, oh yeah, and also, Sogo decided not, uh, uh, decided not to kill another Kiva when he got the Kiva Ride Watch, because, uh, yeah, she made it... Uh, she uh, she gave him fuzzy feelings. Yeah, you're letting a mass mur uh, sociopathic mass murderer get away because you're thinking with the wrong head. Ugh. And, let's see, the Decade Arc... Basically, every single time Sukasa was on screen, this was, yeah, Zeo was basically just a sequel to Decade. Uh, yeah, every, si and yeah, Sukasa was either cryptic, uh, a fighting, uh, whether, uh, and just doing his own thing, or just, mm. yeah, no, Sukasa is just, uh, Decade is a very, very botched product. And it still shows. Double! Barely got anything resembling a tribute arc. I, I think the only even slight monochrome of a tribute arc that Double got was when uh, uh, was when Sogo, uh, was Sogo was fighting against the Reser uh, against the alternate universe Eternal. And even then, it was just it, it seemed to be carrying on with uh, uh, with uh, with Dido's characterization from a uh, Conrad Returns Double. Uh, let's see, Conrad Double Returns Eternal. Which was not a good characterization for him, and basically went against everything that, uh, that he was in uh, the movie he debuted in. But yeah, Double seems to have gotten the complete arc shaft when it comes to tribute arcs. Oh yeah, another thing that uh, that uh, Zeo and Megaforce have in common: uh, the tribute arcs were very hit and miss in uh, most instances. But yeah, I will fully give credit that Zeo got more hits than misses when it comes to Megaforce. But then again, that's not exactly hard to do. Because Mega Force was incompetent. This was just. Pfft. Anyways, the Ozark. Well, it was good to. See, well, hey, at least we got to see the goddamn Kuroto once again, just uh, going around and devouring all the scenery in in in, in sight. Uh, well, I don't care. I still love the goddamn Kuroto, and him running around as another O's was just. <laughs> Uh, there was just so much ham in there. Uh, that uh, there was so much ham contained in that man. He could basically open up a deli. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Oh, uh, and yeah, it was kind of interesting to see the career. Uh, uh, what path Eiji's life took, if not for the incident that led to him becoming O's, actually following in his father's footsteps as a politician, and but again, still trying to use his position to try and help as many people as he could. I like that. I, I like that idea. And again, the contrast between uh, between Eiji and Kuroto, and the goddamn Kuroto, who was just, yeah, basically declaring himself the Grand Dictator of Kigasia, uh, or Malasia, whatever, whichever one you want to go with, the same joke applies. Uh, declaring himself, yeah, basically the amalgamation of M. Bison and the guy who owns Malasia. It was just, eh, it's always fun to see uh, see the goddamn Kuroto do his thing. The Forza Orc. Barely even a, a Forze was barely even had a tribute arc since I got o, got overshadowed by Fies. and yeah, that kind of leads me to think that Shirakura has a bit of a hate on for Riku Sanjo since yeah, with three writer series that Sanjo helmed, Double Forze and Drive, uh, they either got uh, barely a tribute arc or just uh, barely even a footnote or was just botched beyond all repair. Uh, basically, because I think that. Uh, well, yeah, because Sanjo, base, his writing style basically acts as antithesis to Shirokura's view of the yeah, common writer and heroism in general. It, it could be personal bias uh, talking, but that's just how I see it. Wizard. Boring and, yeah, I, honestly, just barely even a footnote, just a throwaway. Uh, a throwaway. Uh, but then again, Wizard wasn't exactly uh, isn't exactly in a lot of people's top uh, top ten writer series. Let's just be honest. Wizard was kind of boring, so not exactly a whole lot of blood to squeeze from that stone, in my opinion. If you like Wizard, good for you. But well, I wasn't really a big fan of Wizard when it was premiering, so uh, just make it out what you will. Gaim, uh, the Gaim tribute arc. 
Um, kind of a bit confusing, especially considering, yeah, God, uh, God Coda was still around, even though his history as Gaim was overwritten, but then it, uh, hopefully with, uh, with the whole Zo timeline dissolved, that we could just sweep all that under the rug, and yeah, Coda is still Fruit Jesus, and, uh, and yeah, it was still interesting to see. Uh, yeah, uh, and yeah, it was uh, nice to see uh, see Kaito again. Uh, well, I mean, minus me uh, being barren, but you know, still Kaito still being just a uh, well, being an ass. And uh, again, not a whole lot to say about about the Gaim tribute arc. I mean, it was competent. I mean, it, it didn't. Well, not exactly competent. It it didn't piss me off. Let's just say with that. All right, the Ghost Tribute Arc. All right, so seeing Takeru and most of the cast from uh, from the Shrine still around, and again, it's kind of hard to get mad at a tribute series when the writer uh, that it was paying tribute to was just, yeah, yeah. Further on the list, uh, further down from the list, uh, yeah, from uh, from Wizard is is definitely Ghost. Ghost was not a good writer series, so honestly, they could only just go up from there. Uh, but, alright, yeah, let's see, Ghost, alright, Drive, I haven't seen Overcourtzer, so I don't know how the tribute arc was handled there, so I'll reserve my judgment for the, uh, for the written review of that, and what we got in the main show was just some, well, again, it was followed in from Overcourtzer, where they met Go, and, well, Gates used that knowledge of encountering Go to, well, try and break Chase out of the memories from the alternate timeline. So, yeah, base, and it just culminated with Chase repeating his sacrifice to save Go from Gold Drive. So, eh. Let's see, the X-8 arc. Very early in the show, so forgive me if my memory of it is a little hazy. And, yeah, well, at least it was just good for establishing uh, the rules for how the Another Writers, uh, again, pre-Another ZO worked. And, yeah, uh, that the writer's history is being overwritten... And yeah, uh, with X-8's history being overwritten, that allowed for the goddamn Kuroto to become another O's thanks to the Ultra Timeline. Uh, where, yeah, he never afraid his father, Dan Masamude, for all the crap he pulled, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, alright, well, aside from just a couple of the old cast popping back up, it was just another... Uh, which is kind of sad, considering X-8 is one of my favorite writer series. Again, aside from just the goddamn Kuroto, but he does help. Seriously, if you haven't seen X-8, do so. It it's, it takes a while for uh, Dan Kuroto to become the goddamn Kuroto that we all know and love. But it once you do, it, it, I mean, you'll, you'll have a fun time anyway. And, you know, kind of, again, gamer bias here. The Bill Tribute Arc. Should not have been the very first writer. Uh, should not have been the first tribute arc in the series. Yeah, again, like uh, like I said when I wrote the review of the movie, uh, I'll post the link on my uh, to my review there if I get around to it. Anyways, yeah, honestly, I think double should uh, another double should have been the first another writer they encountered and save uh, save another build for the uh, Zo build crossover movie. But then again, that kind of makes sense. But yeah, again, I recognize that they still had the cast on set. They might as well just got the footage out of the uh, – get that tribute out of the way. But again, they could have just saved that for the movie when they knew they were contractually obligated to come back. Uh, and yeah, another – oh yeah, and another – the uh, first uh, – the build arc demonstrated that these guys had no idea what they were doing since, again, it wasn't – it wasn't uh, sometime in the past. Bill took place at an alternate timeline because, again, remember the sky wall and all that? Because trust me, I think somebody would have remembered seeing. Uh, see, let's see, the Skywall was uh, sh first showed up in 2007. We didn't see any, the Skywall show up in any other writer series, so yeah, obviously it was an alternate universe. I think somebody might have mentioned, uh, you know, a giant stone wall that came out of the ground and split Japan three ways. I think they might have remembered something like that disappearing. But then again, some people. Uh, but then again, people are full on. Oh, Clark Kent just takes off his glasses and oh, suddenly now he's Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, b a bad argument, but you get what I mean. Just, uh. So yeah, Zio, still just one tiny notch above Power Rangers Mega Force, but that's not saying much. It's in the same ballpark. I mean, again, it it's nowhere near as infuriating and just. 
outright bad as Megaforce, but it just it could have been so much more, you know. You know it could if there was any other producer in charge of this uh, in charge of the show, anyone other than the absolute worst producer Toei has, the guy who actively hates Common Rider and does and literally does not know what uh, what it means to be a hero, and also just make sure it's not written by the guy that also wrote the Ninja, the uh, let's see, first or second worst rated Sentai series to date. Just any other staff. Could have most likely done a better job. Just, but why Toei keeps giving Shirakura the time of day is just nothing short of baffling to me. Especially, again, when they know that the guy's track record is toxic. But hopefully we'll at least get a break from Shirakura's stupidity for at least two or three more years. And yeah, uh, the, the same guy that wrote X-Aid is going to be writing Kamen Rider Zero One, the first Kamen Rider series of the Reiwa era. I'm looking forward to that. It Hopefully it will be good. A again, with Z from Zio, it, you can only go up from here. So, look forward to next week with, Z uh, with Kamen Rider Zero One. Bye!